on the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker, play BBC Radio Stoke, and on your radio. The sound of where we live is BBC Radio Stoke. Steve Wright is chairman of the Licensed Private Hire Car Association. Morning, Steve. Morning, Lee. Why is there then a seemingly a shortage of taxis at the minute? Well, right now we're in a perfect storm. And last year I did write to Grant Shapps um, about this time last year, in fact, in July, to say that this was likely to happen last autumn. But because of the second, third waves, et cetera, it hasn't happened then, but it's now happening now. Um, since the pandemic, uh, many drivers have retired or got other jobs. Uh, they've been unable to main their car, maintain their cars, you know, the licensing costs and other payments. And sadly, some have even passed away. You know, they've been on the front line during COVID. And for this reason, um, you know, there is a drastic shortage. So it's a combination of factors, but all focused uh, around COVID. And, and now that the market has reopened in terms of, and, and I guess the main issue at the minute is is late night taxes, is it, as opposed to daytime? Is there more, more people around to drive in the day? No. Um, you know, sadly, the problem is 24-7. Um, it's worse, obviously, at night. And that's a critical time when we need to be providing services. And you're Caller just mentioned, you know, the street closures. That's adding problems because we can't literally get to places where there are people needing picking up. Um, In addition, the government have introduced quite a lot of new regulations, statutory standards. Many councils have not been open for licensing. Stoke have been pretty good, but they've only actually had online licensing, which presents difficulty for some drivers. However, there's also been a problem for drivers to get medicals. Um, But this could be resolved because um, at the moment the doctors are not doing taxi medicals and we're very much uh, wanting councils to adopt processes that have been taken up by the road haulage and bus companies and what have you, um, where the medicals are done by independent companies and uh, the doctors provide basic medical records and a full medical is done. These are things that could be done to stop this catastrophic problem. It really is a 24-7 problem. You're looking across the country at this, and so how significant a shortage are you seeing then? Everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. And I've written to the uh, Department for Transport yet again um, to try and get them to chief licensing authorities to make sure they make their services available. We're also trying to get um, a pragmatic view taken by all licensing authorities um, on, on the medical so that we can get people through the system and there's also the relicensing. When when a driver has actually been licensed for a period of time and he's stopped because financially he can't continue, some of these drivers are being treated as brand new drivers and having to go through all the hoops again. Some are saying, we're just not going to bother. We've been doing this job for many years. So it's right across the, the country. It's a national problem. Is it the case, though, that some people, particularly having gone through coronavirus, have realised this is no longer the job for me? I I don't want to do this job. It's just not as desirable. Well, that's exactly a factor because um, drivers have been on the front line. They've been providing services for the education, for the NHS, um, for the ambulance services, you know, getting train drivers and bus drivers into work where public transport's been working. The costs of actually becoming a driver and all the hoops you need to go through People have actually gone out and got other jobs that are far less um, n- less difficult to get and, and less expensive to actually take part in. There's also another thing on the horizon that's a nightmare for the industry, and that's everybody's been pushed into very expensive electric vehicles. And, you know, on the back of a pandemic, when drivers have been, those that have been working have been sort of taking 90% hit on their earnings, This is the perfect storm I mentioned at the beginning. A perfect storm, you may say, but I suppose the push to electric is going to happen. And we look at the climate change at the very least, uh, you know, and you can't deny the fact it's it's coming. You've got to accept it, haven't you? Well, I don't think you have to accept it. You have to look at all the alternatives. Um, You know, at the end of the day, we've done some research and 75% drivers don't have the ability to charge at home. 
That means them stopping the vehicle during the working day and not getting paid and charging the vehicle. And we're finding out that electricity is up to eight, eight times dearer at street level. These are other areas that are all putting people coming into the industry. The net result of this is the young lady that was on just now not being able to get a vehicle because all of these factors come into the thing. You need to get some transition into electric. We need to get the infrastructure in place. We need to get electricity provided at the right cost for people. And there's a lot of work to be done on the air quality. I, I'm, I work with the government's air quality unit and have a, a monthly call with them. And we're flagging the difficulties up because um, th there's so many burdens on the industry. We all want cleaner air, but we all want the ability to be able to charge the vehicles and to get some grant money to, for the vehicles to be affordable to the industry. I mean, you've talked obviously about the, the, the downsides at the minute, the challenges facing the industry, but it, you know, as chairman of the Licensed Private Hire Car Association, how would you sell it to someone who you want to get into the industry, a new driver? Where are the positives here, Steve? Well, the, the, there's the demand. Uh, there is the actual demand. And it's a strange irony that during a recession, normally there's a d dearth of drivers because people have been made redundant and what have you. But under these circumstances, you know, with the pandemic and the costs and everything else, it's putting people off. We're doing our best to say to people, look, there's a career here. There's a career path for people that want to take it seriously. I think the government stats that came out last month said they know that 17% of the drivers have dropped in a year. Um, what What's happening is because people are less reticent to take public transport you know they actually want private transport for for safety for door to door as that young lady said earlier to be picked up you know safely and securely there is an there is an opportunity for people that want to work and the industry's got to work very very hard to promote that and that's something that the LPHA will be doing can you make good money Yes, you can make good money. And you've also got, uh, if you're a self-employed driver, the freedom to come and go when you want. You can work part-time. There are many, many pluses to working in the industry. I've been in the industry a long while. I started off as a part-time driver, ended up owning a company, and eventually ended up running the Trade Association. There's nearly half a million people before the pandemic working in the industry and making a very good living. It is a good job. It's a great job in that you can actually, you never know where you're going to go. So when you go to work, um, you can get a job just around the corner to the local supermarket or you could get a job to anywhere in the UK. It's a good job and we're just struggling a minute because we do need to get the drivers and we do need the authorities to give us a helping hand. It does seem to be driving, does seem to be a recurring theme at the minute coming out of coronavirus, lorry drivers, taxi drivers. Um, but you, you foresee more problems before you see a solution. Yes, I do. And the one thing that I think people should remember is that we are part of the solution on climate change and what have you, because if more people use taxis and private hire vehicles, uh, there are less car ownership, there are less vehicles. You know, one taxi in the city centre can do 20 journeys. That saves 20 cars being in the city centre. So there's lots of positives to uh, to come out of the other side, hopefully. But we do need to get the driver shortage sorted out. Steve Wright, thank you for your time this morning. Chairman of the Licensed Private Hire Car Association.